I uh, teach at the University of Windsor in the School of Dramatic Art in Canada. And today I'm going to talk to you about how clowns dispense uh, laughter and smiles to create changes in hospitals and healthcare settings. And we'll make sure. Oh. So I want to start by just talking briefly about health. Uh, the World Health Organization in its charter in 1947 suggested quite rightly, that health is not just the absence of disease or infirmity. And it's to deal with a physical, mental, and social well-being, a complete physical and well a complete physical, mental, and social well-being, which is much more in keeping with our current move towards notions of um, wellness and quality of life within healthcare. And as part of that, um, laughter, humor, play are an integral part of the way that we can deliver uh, healthcare. So uh, what I'm talking about is laughter. So the big question is, is laughter the best medicine? Well, there are lots of different opinions about it. Here, here's one that I particularly like. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, I've never been there. Um, However, there's been a lot of research in the last uh, 35 or 40 years about the value of health, uh, value to health of smiling, laughter, and so on. And most of the studies would suggest uh, that, that it affects the immune system, it helps with reducing anxiety, depression, and so on, um, and, in, and even improves heart health. But this talk is not going to focus on that aspect today. I'm just going to say that this sort of research is out there, so there is a lot of um, evidence uh, to suggest and support the role of laughter and smiles within healthcare settings. So how do you deliver a healthy dose of laughter? Well, you can take two clowns and call me in the morning. Um, <laughs> Uh, on one side here, on uh, this side here, that's uh, Dr. Happen to Clue, my alter ego. And on the other side is my writing partner and great friend, Dr. Peter Spitzer, in his Dr. Fruit Loop persona. <laughs> but if you are going to take two clowns and call me in the morning, there's a big question about which two clowns you should take. Uh, within healthcare, there are a whole plethora, that's an academic word, a plethora of clowns that work within healthcare. There are care clowns, there are hospital clowns, there are therapeutic clowns, there are medical clowns, and there are clown doctors. And I am going to talk about clown doctors, as soon as I press the right button. Um, so clown doctors uh, work in pairs. They wear a white coat, a red nose, very little uh, f face paint, no large floppy shoes. Uh, they don't go around in clown cars around the hospitals. Although occasionally, uh, razor scooters have been seen in Australian hospitals. <laughs> really interesting. Um, and they parody the work and medical procedures of doctors, nurses, and the healthcare team. And clown doctors are very well established. They started working in hospitals in 1986 when uh, Michael Christensen started with the uh, Big Apple uh, Circus Clown Care Unit in New York. And since then, it's spread all over the world. So there are programs, for example, in France, uh, Le Rire Médecin, run by my dear friend uh, Caroline Simmons, the Humor Foundation uh, here in Australia, again, run by my friend uh, Peter Spitz. I have a lot of friends. And, um, <laughs> Then Fools for Health, which was the program I started in 2000 in uh, Canada. And clown doctors um, work within a healthcare system that's under siege. Uh, my, my wife is a physician, and I have a lot of physician and nurse friends, and one of the biggest problems is time. There isn't enough time to deliver the caring element of healthcare within a hospital. Um, so for, a large, for the large part, uh, physicians, nurses, and the therapists within a hospital are, are sort of forced to focus on what's wrong with the patient. Whereas the clown doctor can work on everything, and particularly on the psychosocial aspects of the patient, those elements that are not medically compromised. And one of the things that clown doctors do is because in many ways they are, they are like um, uh, the lowest of the low within the hospital, they often see and hear things that other people either are not aware of or don't have time for. And because in the best programs, clown doctors are integral members of the healthcare team, they can pass the information that they gain back to the healthcare team. So whether it's informally at the nurse's station or whether it's formally through planning meetings or team rounds, the information that they gain 
by being, I wouldn't say unobtrusive, by, be, by being able to gather information in different ways is passed to the healthcare team and is then used as part of the treatment process for the patient. One of the things that, uh, that clown doctors do is they change social rules. Part of their raison d'etre is they are supposed to be appropriately inappropriate. And in fact, uh, the professor at Igier in Paris, where one of the hospitals that uh, Caroline Simmons, Le Rue Médecin, works at, actually instructed the clowns if they didn't disrupt the proceedings within the hospital, they'd be kicked out. <laughs> so uh, one of the major things they do is change atmosphere. And we're going to show you just a little bit of how that happens. Well, the first thing you do is you have the smallest mask in the world, world the uh, red nose. and. Uh, then immediately you see it change everything. <laughs> and so what we're going to do is I need you to, this is audience participation part, okay, so I need you to turn to someone next to you and just turn to them, come on, come on, I can't wait all day, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now I want you either to hold their hands or look into their eyes, okay, <laughs> and then I want you to, s to sing with me. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are grey. De la 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 la. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Okay. Am I still live? Because I just knocked this. Yeah. Okay. Um, Somewhere I have some glasses. Okay. So that's one of the simple ways you change atmosphere. Uh, that wouldn't be what you would do normally, but you could do that quieter within a room, within uh, uh, various places within the hospital. So that's one of the ways to change atmosphere. Um, and changes in the atmosphere changes attitude in the staff, what we call staffitude. And changing staffitude is very important because the staff are on deck for 12 hours at a time. It is really grueling working in a hospital. It's getting worse because of shortages of staff and so on. So if a clown can come in and change the demeanor of the staff member and the team simply by singing to them or sharing a joke, that makes a huge difference to the delivery of service. In fact, the research that we conducted showed it changes the healthcare delivery and the way that the patients uh, perceive the health care that they're getting. They believe they get better health care in those situations where the clown doctors are on the ward. So how do we do that? Well, here are a couple of examples. At the hospital. Okay, there's, there's two little old ladies on the bus, and they've been on the bus for a very long time. Yeah. And the one says to the other one, she says, you know what, I think my butt's asleep. And the other one says, you know, I know it is, because I could hear it snoring. <laughs> <laughs> so... Telling jokes and stories with the staff. Uh, here's another example. Okay, so everybody wants to, doc, uh, to dance with Dr. Floretta uh, Cauliflower you know, on her little accordion there. So not every nurse will want to dance, but when they do want to dance, the clown doctors that are there. So one of the things we do is change attitude. So here you've got an, uh, an example of uh, Dr. Havender Clue and Dr. Twinkletoes at a group rehabilitation studies, uh, rehabilitation session, um, engaging the, uh, the uh, patients in extension of motion and just getting them to smile as we're doing it. Okay. So here are three, uh, three short videos about other ways of changing attitude. The first video is taken immediately after the SARS epidemic was in uh, Ontario in Canada. And at that time, the doors were literally locked to everybody but absolute essential staff. So the nearest and dearest, the family members were not allowed in. Eventually, they, they were allowed in one at a time in dribs and drabs. And uh, shortly after that, they were cut for an hour or two. And then, uh, very, uh, very slowly, they started to let people in. Fairly soon after the, they first started to let the uh, closest family members in, they let the clown doctors in because we were deemed an essential service. So we're going to see three. This is a first one that was done immediately after that. And this is just in a waiting room in what you would call accident casualty. I believe we would call a merge. Hi. Hi. Hey. Turning in. Are you going to be food? 
Uh, I'm hungry. You gotta have a food to the dietitian. Oh yeah, they are on a diet all the time. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> they're always on diet. Yeah. It's a dietitian. They're always, you know, stopping you eating. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nobody wants surgery here. We'll go find more. Vi no, uh, not patients. Patient. That's right. Yeah. The wonderful Dr. Beebe, Alison Grant. Yeah, really good. Really great clown doctor. Here we go. My pony lies over the sea. My pony lies over the ocean. So bring back my pony to me. Number three all day long. Let's do the number rumba ding do do. Let's do the number rumba ding do do. Underneath the blankets, go all the girls and boys, rocked in rolling riding, out along the bay, home back for morning town, many miles away. <laughs> If you're happy and you know it, tap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, tap your hands. Now the important thing about that video is immediately before we got there, before the, the camera was turned on, this child was screaming. Uh, the parents were distraught. And you can see in that sort of progression of pieces of music and singing, it was an isolation ward, so we had to get full metal jacket to go in. We didn't even have to go in, because we've changed the attitude and the, the atmosphere within that room. The parents were relieved, the stress was released as well. And it's not just children that need it, they're also adults. So we, here's an example, because uh, Fools for Health works from cradle to grave. We work both with children, uh, you know, uh, right in the neonatal unit, all the way through to uh, seniors in their 90s and even se uh, people who reach 100. Um, so this is a, an example, a very short snippet, working in pre-operation. These people are waiting for surgery. So as they're sitting there very stressed, and then uh, Dr. Havender Clue and Dr. Floretta Cauliflower come in. We have a lot of patients we get the, uh, what do you call that, the uh, lazy... Oh, no, 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 lazy Susan. Yeah. Lazy Susan. And we, and we yeah. put the one patient here, one here, and then we go back to back, like this, and then she, I cut and she sews. <laughs> Stitching and sewing. Yeah, and we can do two or three patients at once, it's your tax dollars at work. <laughs> we save money in hospitals. Um, uh, one of the things we do is we work to end of life. So, in palliative care, it's very complicated and difficult. As Patch Adams says, Patch is not a clown doctor, but he's influenced clown doctors a lot. He says, no one is ever dying. We're all living till we take our last breath. And the problem is, for physicians, it's very hard because all they can do is prescribe medication to take the pain away. But these people are still human beings. And so the clown doctors will go in and do all sorts of things and talk about love and life and sex and drugs and rock and roll and religion because these people are adult humans. They're still living. And what this does is it gives patients, as Liz Chaplin says, moments away from the, from the pain and the worry. A hospital's a very stressful place to be, particularly if you're sick. So, you know, in fact, the old thing is you, hospital's no place to be if you're sick. But anyway, moving on. So working with seniors. <laughs> what was I talking about? Uh, um, okay, working with seniors. So there's a there's a change in style for the clown doctors. The clown doctors now become elder clowns. They take off the white coat, they keep the nose, and um, the thing about it, we first did this because one of our clown doctors realized we were going into nursing homes and people were saying, why is the doctor here? Uh, am I sick? So we started to take, we realized that this is their home, it's not a hospital, so you had to take the clothes I had to make a change and take off the doctor's outfit. So elder clowns work in nursing homes and long-term care. You called them a a aged care here. Um, the work was, uh, is, uh, again, uh, beginning to take root around the world thanks to the work of people like Magdalena Schamberger with Hearts and Minds in Scotland, your own uh, Peter, Senior, uh, P Peter Spitzer and the, uh, the Humor Foundation here and, and Fools for Health. Um, and one of the things you work with a lot is with memory, uh, cognition, and uh, with communication skills. And Fools for Health use a lot of music. Dream, 
and dance. So you have a patient, a uh, resident rather, engaging with dementia, engaging with the physiotherapist uh, as a result of the clowns being there. So one of the things that happens is as a result of this uh, interaction on the wards and in the residences, you get some changes to health. Uh, one of the profound things that we found with our, one of our first studies with the uh, What's the Value of a Smile study, which was supported, I have to say this, supported by the Social Sciences Humanities Research Council of Canada, was a reduction in the need for medication, anxiety medication, pain medication, and so on. The other really important thing I've already mentioned is the, the change in perception of health care. And of course, staff stress goes down. Um, for elder clowns, some really interesting things happen. The SMILE study uh, that was done here in Australia found that the, clown, the effect of the clowns had the same effect on agitation as antipsychotic drugs with none of the side effects. And for our work in, um, in Canada uh, with our Down Memory Lane study, uh, we found some really phenomenal changes in the way that the seniors with dementia were present and able to recognize people, remember things about their past, remember things about what happened last week and the day before, fascinating things. One of the amazing things, and I didn't realize what this meant until my wife explained it to me, is the Canadian Council on Health Accreditation, which accredits all hospitals and health cares in Canada, uh, um, hospitals and, and health programs in Canada, um, came and viewed and, uh, and reviewed the work of the clown doctors and said they are a leading practice. So it's very significant. And more than that, they are a standard of care, which means they ha should be in every hospital in Canada. So that was very profound. My young love, he say to me, my father, oh my. We're in a dance towards wellness with the patients, their family, the staff. So it's been a, an interesting two-step. Each dance partner is different. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your support, too. And thank you.